کی عبادت لو کی محبت Lord, have your way in us. Let it be you and not me, Lord. Minister to your people and those that will be watching online. Whatever time they may be watching. Those watching live and those that will be watching the replay. That you will touch them. Answer them. Move in their lives also. Deliver them. Bring them to that place that they can look up and say, Lord, Lord, is this how good you are? Is this how faithful you are? Thank you, Father. Amen. Now we want to continue where we stop. The anointing of God. We've been dealing with it for the past weeks. I've we'll been talking about laying hands. When we lay hands, we we'll release the anointing. When we lay hands, we we'll release the fire of God. When we lay hands, we we'll release the power of God. We have gone through the the points. By laying hands. There's inheritance in laying hands. There's repositioning in laying hands. There's, a, 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 there's wisdom that's important. There's honor. There's a authority that's released when we lay hands. And then, of course, there's victory also. There's laying hand on the sick. The God has given the commandment to the church. We shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Thus, as we believe that we as believers can lay hands on the sick, especially when they are unbelievers, when they are outside the covenant and they can recover. But in the church, Bible says in James chapter 5, verse 14 to 16, that we should look call for the elders. It's that we should call for the elders in the church. And then we'll pray about that person and anoint him. And that person will be, be healed. Baptism, the baptism in the Holy Ghost also comes with laying on of the hands. When we lay hands, people will receive baptism. Amen? Amen? There's also the transfer of sin and impurities and pollution that can come with laying hands. According to Leviticus chapter 16, that the, the priest, the high priest, has to lay hands on the, on the goat and confess the sins of the children of Israel upon the head of the goat. And that's part of the warning that Paul gave, the, gave to Timothy and the church that we should what? be careful how we lay hands on people. The Bible said, lay hands suddenly on no man. Because what? You could be a partaker of their sin. And once again, keep your life holy. So we believe that the pollution can come to you. And you can become a partaker of people's sin. You can get there and you catch the demons by laying hands on them suddenly. If you don't have discernment, you just think that because you know you can walk around as uh, now of course we can always do that, but you gotta make sure that the anointing is on you. And then you have covered yourself in prayer. The blood of Jesus Christ is applied to you. You have applied the blood, and then you seek guidance. Make sure that the Holy Ghost is leading you, is leading you, directing you. Or sometimes there are people you want to lay hands on the Holy Ghost say, No! Don't touch them. And if you are not mature in the spirit, you say, But why? Why shouldn't I? What's wrong with them? Or maybe you think it's your mind. 
God is telling you, don't touch them. They are living shrines. Amen? They are living altar of hell. Don't you know that devil come to church also? You better be wise. I'm not talking about those who have devils or demons. I'm talking about people who are what? Agents. Agents. They come to the church to destroy you. They stay where they are and they release spells over you, over the church. The pastor could fall apart at the altar. He could lose, he could drain you off. These are realities. That's why when we start morning prayer during the service, we're not just doing it because we don't know, want to do religious things. No. We are opening the heaven and asking the Lord to come and do what? Feed the house and watch over the gathering. Because you don't know who is going to come. You don't know who heaven has arranged to set you up. Amen. So be sure you are filled with the Holy Ghost so that you are stronger than any demon Amen. that want to jump on you. Because they can. It's very really like that people, you know, when people let, cast demons with, they lay hands on people, that's all right. But make sure that you have stronger power. But when you lay hands, they can get on you and you won't even know. Amen. They can jump on you. I told you, I've, there was one time I laid hands on somebody and my, my hand almost froze. The head was a shrine. The lady was a shrine. She kept saying they are crows, they are crows all over, they are crows everywhere, they are crows. I said, I said which crows? I don't see any crows. He said, all over, all over, they are following me around. When we lay hands also, there's impartation. Impartation to establish you and to boost the gift in you. Amen? There's a lay hand that commissions you. Commissions you for assignment. When we lay hands, that's, we can ordain you also. When we ordain you, we lay hands on you. And release you into your calling. When we lay hands also, we can release a blessing on you. Jesus laid hands on the, on, the, on, the, on the children that were brought unto him and blessed them. There's also something in, the, in Leviticus chapter 24, verse 14. Leviticus 24, 14 that talks about uh, laying hands to co bring condemnation on the guilty. And that's really not for the church, amen? But in the Old Testament, that was how the Bible said that the witnesses of whatever curse, uh, whoever is cursing, that the witnesses will come and lay hands on him and confirm that he was guilty and then they will stone him. Now, we don't do that anymore in our present time. Now, from there, we begin to say, as we began to discuss last week, talking about anointing. So, when God begins to anoint you to take you to another level, God will begin to do what? Release anointing on your life. Whenever God begins to bless you, to take you to another level, He does that by what? By the anointing that He begins to release. We call it the new anointing, fresh oil, that the power of God that begins to come on you. Whether it's about deliverance, whether it's about, about ministry, whether it's about a new business, you know, sometimes we call it grace. You know, you receive grace. You begin to receive enablement of new anointing to step what? Into the future. To step into the new place. To step into the new territory. To step into the higher, or whether you are taking a throne, a position. Whether in government, or whether in a business, or what, there's an appointment. The church will rule up. Pray for you. God is releasing, will be releasing grace on your life. Call it the new anointing. You need it for that office. You cannot operate in the old when God has opened the new. Amen. Bible mm -hmm. talks about the old wine skin and the new wine skin. You cannot operate with the old wine skin with the new wine. 
Otherwise, the Bible says it will what? It will burst. And everything will be spilled. Be wasted. And that's when we begin to look at Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 8. Ecclesiastes 9, 8. Glory to God. Bible says let thy garments be always white. Let thy garments be what? Always white. And let thy head lack no ointment. Let thy garments be always white. Amen? The garments speak about what? Your character, the righteousness. Amen? Righteousness. You know, in the Bible, you, especially in King James, you read about what? Two things in the Bible about you know, our relationship. The Bible calls it godliness and righteousness. Godliness and what? Righteousness. What is godliness? Godliness is what? Our, how we deal with God. And righteousness is about what? How we deal with men, which we call our character. You know? Righteousness. Amen. In, in Revelation chapter 19, verse 8, the Bible tells us what? That the white linen is what? The righteousness of the saints. The white linen, the white garment. That's what the Bible says. Do what? Let your what? Your garment be always what? White. What does, a, 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 what does a, a, a Christian wear? A white dress. <laughs> Bible says if you are, if you are, in Isaiah, it talks about what? If your sins are as what? As red as what? Scarlet. I'll make them what? As white as blue. When God washes us in the blood, our garment becomes what? Pure white. Pure white. Amen. Become brilliant white. Amen. So Bible says what? Let your garment be always what? White. And your head don't know what? Lack on them. That's what we say. That righteousness is what? By the power of God that is in me. There's a power of God in me and there's a power of God on me. The power of God in me Makes me to what? To become. The power of God on me makes me to do. Are we together? Amen. The power of God in me makes me to become a child of God. To move from what? Faith to faith. From glory to glory. From sin to righteousness. Amen. The power of God in me makes me to hate sin and to seek God. The power of God in me makes me what? To cry out in prayer. The power of God in me makes me to hunger for the bread of life. The power of God in me makes me to, what? to worship and to trust Him. It begins to change me. It begins to make me believe that tomorrow will be what? Better than today. Or my yesterday. It gives me hope. It, makes, it gives me believing and not to give up. It's a power in me. It is what transforms my life. That people can look back from where I was and say, wow, there's something about you now. I can't even recognize you anymore. You better know that you didn't do it by yourself. It was the power of God that was what? That's what? In you. That's what Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 is saying. What does it say there? To find it. Amen? Philippians 2 13. It says, For it is God. See, for it is what? God. 
God who walketh in you, both to what? To will and to do of his good pleasure. He walketh in you. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. What does it say? Ephesians 3, 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all mm -hmm. that we ask or think. Yes, fine. That would be because we're going to enter into this give our mind. So we have to have all these mics ready. Especially you, if you want to be reading, have it by your side. Ephesians 3 verse 20 says, mm -hmm. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or mm -hmm. think, mm -hmm. according to the power, the power that worketh in us, in us. Amen. 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 There's a power working inside of you. The power that worketh in you. Paul talks about that power that he walked in him mightily. Amen. God wants us to move in power, but so much more the power in us. Because you can have the power on you and you have no power in you. You neglect the power in you. That the power on you can do what? begin to become bigger than the power in you, what happens? It begins to do what? Crush you. And if you continue to live that way, it will smash you. That's why we say that anointing can become what? Destructive when the presence is not there. Because you know you and I also call the presence in all, or the power in all the presence. Amen? But the right word the Bible actually calls is the power. So when the present slash power, as we call it, is strong in you, you are able to do what? Carry whatever ministry God is giving you. Or break in whatever gift God has gifted you. And it will what? It will not affect you. Because the power on you, it will make you what? Do. And you better know that when people begin to do, if they have an evil heart, if their heart has not been sanctified, if their character has not yet been built up, it will begin to work, stir up your emotions. Because the power of you will work, will stir you. When somebody is stirred, you know that emotions can go high. So if you have a, a desire that's already in you, which has not been dealt by your character, by the power in you, that thing, that character, that character will begin to manifest. So if you like money, it will manifest. If you like women, it will manifest. If you are in life, or you bet. Yes, yes, that's right. That's why you see pastor do all those things. If you cannot endure when somebody offends you, it will manifest. That's right. Oh yeah. If you are a person for somebody appears, you take a pound and out of that. I mean, it will show. That's why pastors fight in the parking lot. Right. <laughs> and yet they may be on TV and yeah, yeah. they, uh, they star yeah, and all. That's right. Because there's something that they have not dealt with. The power in you will make what will steal you. Yes. Have you seen what that a steel drum that will filled with water, you can bang it and the other person here, the other one will not hear anything. But when it's empty, what happens? People will scream like, who is doing that? Because you make a jacket noise. That's the person that has no work, that has no fullness, no stillness. So, when you have that emptiness in you, and this one is on you, when, it, when this one comes, everything in you will be what? Stand up. Because what the one in you, God uses it to what? Cover our weakness. It makes our weakness to shrink. Are you together? Yes. 
when the one in you is working properly, it begins because there is no man that has no weakness. That's right. Every man has a weakness. Mm -hmm. There is something you wish that nobody knew about that you do. That you desire. But God never exposes it if you are what? If the one in you is working well. If the one in you is not working well, this one upon you, you will do miracles, you will heal the sick, raise the dead, and you finish. Go back to your hotel room and you are calling, can you come over? Not to your wife. <laughs> Yeah, because my body is feeling so hard. That's right. Uh -huh. You see, somebody would. That's why sometimes they will not, some men will not allow you to come into their room after they have finished because probably they already have girls waiting for them in the room. No, it's true. Yeah. There are some prophets, especially prophets. They will never allow you to come into their room unless you are part of the group. It's not that oh, they, will be, they will say that uh, this is a chamber. Right there. No, it's not what that is. Not the, I've learned that it is not because it's, it's the holy chamber. <laughs> they don't want you to see what is inside. They take out from the same room to come and minister. And they're going, they'll be going back to the same room with what is already there. That's all about our uh, brother Bible. You know, we say that not all that glitters is what gold. gold. Then be careful. By their fruit, you shall know them. Never say by their gifts. That's right. Some of us only look at the gift. Oh, he prophesied. He tells you everything. Have you looked That's for the fruit? Amen. Oh, which fruit? <laughs> Well, the miracles are fruit. No, no. the miracles are not fruit. That's right. The fruit is what? Character. And character, the fruit is by cultivation. It doesn't come by prophesying. The fruit comes by abiding. John chapter 15. Abide in me and I in you and you shall what? Bear fruit. And what fruit for that matter? But you know, abide does not come easy. Because God will tell you, come, come to the altar. And he, he thought that it would just, bah, bah, bah. And I will tell you, stay here, I'm coming. <laughs> I will leave you for another five years. Now, to say that I'm waiting for God for five years, when you tell people, people say, <laughs> <It's not good. laughs> you know, if you have everything about you, will be screaming. Are you sure this is God? Devil will get to you. That's what happened to Saul. This was only days, not even months or weeks. Most death, someone said, I'm coming. Wait, I'm coming. I will meet with you. Saul so would face them. Second day, third day, fourth day, six days, the seventh day, so I'm not with it anymore. He went and became a priest. <laughs> so they make making sacrifices. And the funny thing that immediately he finished the Bible says, someone showed up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, somebody said, oh, if only I had been there for another hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, that's, that's nonsense now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> immediately he finished. See someone coming, an old man, <laughs> and he's like, everyone is smoking out of fire. <laughs> what have you done, sir? I forced myself. Because the people were all going there, they were all scattering from me, and I think the Philistine will just come upon me now, and I've not made a sacrifice. <sighs> You've done foolishly. Amen. Psalm 133. Okay. Psalm 133. Behold how good and how pleasant it is 
for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment from the, upon the head that ran down upon the beard, mm -hmm. even Aaron's beard, mm -hmm. that went down to the skirts of his garments, mm -hmm. as the dew of Hermon, mm -hmm. and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. Mm -hmm. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, yes. even life forevermore. Amen. Amen. If you don't understand the secret of our Lord to look upon those verses again, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to do what? To well, dwell together. Say together. 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 In unity. Brings anointing. That's why in the Bible, in the book of Acts, begin to see when they moved in one accord. That's right. The Pentecost came. They were in one accord and praying. The Pentecost came. In chapter 4 also we see them. In one high court, praying. The Bible says after the testimony that the, 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 the uh, Paul and John, after they were they arrested them in chapter 3 when they did the hit the man and they did the cider, they came back and gave the report. The Bible said, and they rejoiced and glorified God that they were counted worthy. The Bible said they prayed and they placed where they were dwelling. The Bible said it was shaking. And they were filled again. Amen. Amen. Unity. One of the multipliers of our mountain is unity. If you have a lot of mountain, you come into agreement. Amen. Unity. Unity. Anointing multiplies. How do you make it multiply? Now, that's for another level, another time. But unity in the church releases what? Heaven to pour out. That's what Jesus was praying in John chapter 7. He said that you may be one, one. As we are one as I am one with the Father. And then the world, how would the world know? By the power that will be released from heaven. When the church is one, that's why we're waiting for this season. We're talking about what? The end time anointing. That it will be what the Bible says, the former and the latter. The former and the latter. It will be greater than the Pentecost time. Because the Pentecost time was just a shower. But a powerful, mighty rain is about to begin to fall in the last time. And they say, are you ready for it? Are you waiting for it? Are you expecting it? Do you want to be a partaker of it? Yes. Are you satisfied with the little thing that you say? You know, you have. That will not do much because devil is about to unleash armies in these coming days also. Have you not read the book of Revelation? So your little anointing will not move. We've not moved a, a bird from anywhere. Talk about a principality that will be coming out from the pit. Amen. Amen. That's why God is preparing the church. Do you not know that God in the Bible, when you read the Bible in depth, you begin to see there's a reason why God kept Abraham. There's a reason why God kept Isaac. There's a reason why God kept Mo uh, 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 Moses. There's a reason why God kept David. You move on to the women. There's a reason why God kept Sarah, Rebecca, Hannah. But when the, when the time was going on, they were being mocked. They were being cheered at. They were being laughed. They were called names. People looked down on them. Not only really the plan that God has. Hallelujah. He was preparing them for a blessing. A blessing of glory. Yeah. Was preparing them for a mission. Yeah. That's why those who God use, they go through stuff. Look at Joseph in the Bible. Did God not show him things? Did he come from hell? <laughs> Why did he have to go through the pit and the prison at, at 
accusation of rape. Amen. Amen. Do not despise the days of a small beginning. Amen. As I was singing that song, have you seen the glory or something? He said, Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. No. Why are you seeing that? Because God is still about to birth something out of my life. Amen. But you see that it's just nothing. Right. You may not even have seen anything. Oh you may look at me like I'm an outcast. You may look at me like I'm nobody. You may look at me like I'm worthless. You may look at me like I'm nonsense. You may look at me like I'm, I'm an entity. But I dare you to look at you next time. I dare you to look at you a second time. Because I know what God has prepared for me. I know what belongs to me in Christ. I know what He has spoken to me in my spirit. It may not have manifested, but I'm holding on to it. I'm holding on to it. I'm standing firm because He that has spoken never changes His mind. His word is here and amen. His word is here and amen. And I can believe and stand on it as my anchor. Amen. Amen. Some of us are, judge, are judging ourselves by today. And I say, stop. Stop. Have you not read your Bible? Do you not know, do you know the ways of the Spirit? Have you not read Proverbs chapter 30? Those are about the ways of the ego and the ways of the man with the maid and the ways of of the lion, you know, the, the ass and all that. You know, those things are not just animals he's talking about. He's talking about Jesus and the church. And it is, it is ministry. Let's go back to Psalms 31, 33. Unity. You see, in the unity, in that Unity, there is something that becomes precious. Anointing. It is like the precious ointment upon the what? The head that ran down the bread. Even Aaron's bread that went down to the skirts of his garment. As a dew of Hermon. And as a dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded and blessed him, even life forevermore. You know, before I read this passage, I was, I, I was wondering, where would I find the passage? And this was some weeks or so. I was wondering, where would I find the passage to really describe how the anointing is in the spirit? Because every time I look, when I enter the anointing, it's like, you know, I think I've described it so many times. Yeah. It's like, and so I, I, I used to like the word. And when I read this over and over again, the Holy Ghost spoke to me. I said, wow! And I've read it in billion times. Not in billion times. Many, many times I never saw it. It's like as the Jew of Hermon. And I said, yes! I mean, us have seen Jim. What's a Jim? Call it mist. That's it. In the spirit, it's like a mist. And all the vegetations are alive. And they're all swinging. And I'm all moving with them. It's like we are, I don't know what where we are. It just is it's, it's a blissful world. And everything is like, oh, Jesus. And it's all flowing. And in that place, I began to see things. And I said, whoa, the Bible even described it when I saw it. It's like a Jew. It's like a Jew. That's what I see. 
subject to. Amen. In the flow. In prayer. When I enter the spirit. And everything else becomes nothing. And it's all about him. And I begin to float. And fly. I don't mean I, I don't have wings. But I just begin to. You know. Get in. And I begin to see everything. I don't know whether that's heaven or wherever. But I begin to see the glory. And all kinds of vegetation. And all kinds of trees. And all kinds of animals. And all kinds. And everything is just swinging. Live. Fresh. And I just wonder, where is this? <laughs> what is, is it? Is, where, where, why do you always see this every time? Amen. Amen. The anointing comes upon what? The head. What does the head have? Heads. Amen. The head has what? Heads. So the anointing comes on the heads and flows down to where? The bread. So from head to bread and down to the skirts to the hem. Amen? Are we together? The anointing comes on where? It says as a it is like precious ointment upon the head. And we know that the head has what? Hairs. And it comes through the head down to the bread. And down to the to the skirts. And of course down to the hem, the lowest part. Are we together? Because there's a mystery there. Are we together? Because I want us to flow together. Praise the Lord. They are these places I just mentioned, or the Bible is spoken about. They are all the areas I want that can be removed. You can remove the hair of the hair. You can remove the beard. You can take off the garment, the skirts. Amen. Amen. So why is it that anointing is not flowing from the head to the neck or to the back? He said it flows from the head to the brain and now to the skirt. Why not to the, to the neck? Because the channel of the anointing is like a railroad. Say railroad. railroad. Have you seen a, tra a train that's not moving on a railroad that's moving on? That's anywhere he chooses to flow? No. He follows the railroad, the channel. The anointing flows through a channel. The anointing does what? Flows through what? The channel. The water flows through the channel. So, and in those channels of the anointing, they can be what? Removed. They can be taken off. They can be changed. Wow. Are we together? Yeah. Yes. Whoa. They can be changed. They can be removed. Wow. But let's, first of all, let's go to Psalm 45 and see where Jesus was anointed in heaven. Psalm 45, 6, 7, and 8. Psalm 45, verses 6 to 8. Mm -hmm. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is the right scepter. Mm -hmm. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Yes. Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness mm -hmm. above thy fellows. Yes. All thy garments smell of myrrh. Yes and aloes yes. and cassia mm -hmm. out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. This is where heaven anointed Jesus. And on this anointing, he flew down to the church on Pentecost. Amen. Jesus was anointed 
upon the throne ten days after he ascended up to heaven, making the fifty days of the Pentecost. So as he was being anointed in heaven, he flew down to where? The skirts. That's what the Bible calls the garments here. Amen? Flew down to the skirts, which is what? The body. Say the body. The body. The, body. the garments speak about what? The body of Christ. We are the body. So when the anointing began to be born upon him, it flowed down the bird down to the garments, to the skates. And that's when the church they, it hit it, it hit the Pentecost upon him that day. Power entered the room and every they were filled with the spirit and began to speak in tongues. Amen. But look at what he says. He says in one verse 8 that I got a smell of what? Myrrh and aloes and cassia. Myrrh, aloes and cassia. Can somebody look at Exodus chapter, chapter 30? Exodus 30, 23. Exodus chapter 30, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Take thou also unto thee principal spices yes. of pure myrrh, 500 mm -hmm. shekels, mm -hmm. and of sweet cinnamon, half so much, mm -hmm. even 250 shekels, and of sweet calamus, 250 shekels, and of cassia, 500 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of oil, olive, and hen. And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, and an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. It shall be a holy anointing oil. It shall be holy anointing oil. That is the same oil that they poured on Jesus and came. Amen. So to say, the demons, the church, was having the same anointing oil. Now, the Old Testament, Old Testament anointing prayer was a little bit different. The composition of the new was a little different. Amen. We're not going to get into composition today. One of these, but all the articles inside that in verse there is now say anoint Aaron. Amen. Anoint what Aaron. Glory to God. That means that you now, as a tabernacle of God, as a temple of God, before you receive anointing on your head, everything in you must have what experienced it. Are we together? Amen. The one on you comes last. That's right. The one in you has to come first. Some of us want the one on us. We don't want the one here. But we like the show. Because it becomes so so Hollywood now. You know, people will televise us. Uh, they, they, you know, I think they perform it in the mirror before they come out uh, at the altar. <laughs> so it's all show. But the, the anointing has not touched them in the inside. They have not been sanctified in the inside. But they want the one here. Was the one here makes you, you know, do drama, show off. But the one in you here will kill you first. Nobody likes that one. That one is, you know, that's what I always say. Lord, when, when, when? Isn't this enough yet? How many times been on a shelf for uh, enough time? <laughs> you know? We talk about the potter, you know, when God told Jeremiah go to the potter's house. And we, I think we've, we've I've thought about how they make the pottery. At some point, they put the pottery, the pot, on the shelf. For a period. It could be any length of time. Now, spiritually, man, it could be any length of time. That's where everything in you is screaming. You don't like it. Nobody wants to be put aside. No way. 
For years you are doing the same thing. Maybe you have not even seen any growth, no increase. People are laughing at you like, would you go do something else for them? <laughs> Maybe your husband, if you have a woman pass or your wife, or your children are like, if they are grown up, to know what's going on. Pastor, nobody is in the church. How are you going to pay the bill? You know how many pastors are in foreclosure? I didn't even know they still in foreclosure now. <laughs> And I thank God for the new levels. You know, their, their levels have passed and I don't even know anymore. <laughs> but it is true. It's true. Because I, I'm with all humility, because it's all God. I'm not owing any bank or anything about anything. So that's why I'm saying that. You know? If I pay mortgage, I will still feel it. But I don't pay mortgage anymore. And it's all by His grace. So man, a lot of pastors are going through stuff. Through stuff. And they are like anxious, worried, and disturbed. They can't flow because of the problem, the burden on their lives. The pressure on their lives. Amen. God wants to take us to another level. Amen. But it has to be by an anointing, yes. by enablement, by grace. Amen. Don't be by your human wisdom. Amen. You gotta find the word and your place in the scripture and take it and say, Oh, this is mine. Bible say something about in, in Matthew 12, uh, uh, 37 said, You shall be justified by thy word. When I was a young person, I used to read and say, and I scratch my head. I said, so does it mean it depends on me? I thought it's all about God. But he dare it. By thy word, thou shalt be justified. And by thy word, thou shalt be condemned. And I used to, used to baffle me. I said, no, I'm a child of God, God should all do it. And that's how some of us still think. That's right. God said, oh God, help me. Help me. You know, in distress, God can hear that. That's all right. In mercy. But there's a time you need to begin to learn that help has already been given. You need to stretch out and take it. Help has already been released. You need to do what? Step in and possess it. You cannot be a child forever. As children, God in His mercy will attend to everything. But don't think that's how God works. When you begin to grow up, and every one of us who is a parent, there's right. some expectation on your child. Come on. Go change your dress now. I mean, before you used to go to your room and find the wife the right dress. And now go, 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 go change your dress. Go find another pant. You know? And then go cut your nails. I don't have to cut you anymore. Find the right color. You know, those things, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's expectation. And as they mature, the expectation in one increases. That's how God is with us. Amen. Because of time, let's go to Genesis 22, verse 13. Genesis 22, 13. Genesis 22, verse 13. 14 also. And 14. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, behind him, a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen, Jehovah Jireh. But that's not the, my, my main focus. You see what? The ram was what? Caught up in the 
tainted by what? His horns. Say horns. Say horns. Can you look at Psalm 92 verse 10? Psalm 92 verse 10 says, But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed. I shall be anointed. Do you see that he connects the horn with what? Anointed. Amen. 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 So what is going on in Genesis 22? The ram was caught in the ticket by his what? Horns. Anointed. What is the ticket there? The cross. Amen. The ram is Jesus, the prophet, the leader. Remember, I said the ram means down. Amen. It's direct initiative, action, leadership. <laughs> that was the ram. So, as a prophet, Jesus came to give people the word. So, the anointing on him was the reason for his what? Arrest. The anointing on him was what? The reason for his what? Arrest. That's why Jesus said the anointing of the, of the Lord is upon me. They didn't arrest him until the anointing came. For 30 years, there was a nobody. But then when the anointing came, they located him. Are we together? The anointing brought what? Enemies around him. They began to, who is that man? Who gave you this authority to do this thing that you do? Is this not Carpenter's son? Where did he get all these things? Do you not see that the whole world is following him? I'm giving you some of the conversation that we're having. The anointing brought what? Hell. He was caught by his horns in the ticket. Amen? Can we go back to Psalm 133? Because now I don't have time to go deeper than this because of time. Psalm 133 says that the old man came upon his what? His head, which has heads, and ran down his burden and to the skirts. Amen. They are what? Let me give you the places that I'm going to get. The head which also on the head, and the bird, and the hem, amen, and down to his what? Hands. Remember that the hands has also hem, amen? The hands have what? Hem. And the, the legs, the hem of the legs. Remember that Jesus always wore a dress that reached down to the foot. Never, it doesn't stop here. Right? You know, so, so whatever you talk about him, turn about down, flowing garment, down to the foot. Amen? Amen. So the hand is speaking about what? The foot. The hand on the hand is speaking about what? The hands. And the skirts, of course, talking about what? The body. Amen? Amen. The bird speaks about what? Yeah, speaks about. No. Uh, speak about it. This speaks about what? His emotions. And the head speaks about what? His mind. Amen. Remember? I said anywhere that man to come is immovable. 
What did they do to Jesus? They put the bed. Let's start from the head first. Let's start from the head. What did they do to the head? The crown. They tore those heads off with a crown. And then they put what? The bread. And what happened? To the body. Three things they did to the body. They stripped the body naked. And did what? Ripped his back bad. Stripped, tore off his flesh. And did what? Pierced his body also. Amen? What happened to the hands? They pierced those hands. What happened to the feet? They, they, they nailed those hands and nailed those feet. Remember what it says in Genesis chapter 22. He was caught by his what? Hands in the... Are you connected? Are you connected? He was caught by what? His horns in the ticket. And what are they doing to him at the cross? They were stripping of those anointing. Remember all those that were anointing is flowing. Are you together? Are you together? Am I? Am I? Are we together? All those things they did to him at the cross were where those anointing is flowing. They tore, they put crown on the head. They tore the bird off. They stripped the garment and whipped his back and pierced his body and nailed his feet and nailed his hands. Amen? When they nailed his, when they, when they put crown on his head, they were what? They were, it speaks about his mind. When they put his bread, it speaks about his what? His emotions. The sweat. It's a sweat. That was a bread. You know when the bread comes on your face? The blood coming out, streaming out of him. And then when they stripped his garment, Talks about the body. The camera speaks about his body. His body, the church, the bride. So that body, when they stripped it and whipped it and pierced it, they talking about the church. They were trying to what? Kill what was gonna come out of him. But not like, like you know, as the Bible said, had they known, had they known. Not only they were following the work of God. Amen? Amen. In that in the three things they did there, they did they, it also moved in the at the three levels. The outside, the bone level, and the inside. When they stripped off his garment, they were dealing with the outside. Amen. When they beat his back, the Bible said that in, in John um, in, in Genesis 20, in 22, when it was, David was prophesying about Jesus, it was a prophetic son, the Zionic son. He said, My bones stare at me. My bones stare at me. That means his body was so torn away that his bones were hanging out. For so like you could look down and see his bones, maybe the ribs or whatever part of the where they were whipping and draw the 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 the, 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 the sharp cords, and it would tore the veins and the and the nerves and the muscles of his body. That was why the Bible says it was unrecognizable. I don't know in, in, when you read Isaiah. That there was much in about him that no man could desire. He was unrecognizable. People who knew him couldn't recognize him anymore. Amen. And then the Bible talks about they pierced my heart. Or they wounded my heart. That wound was not on the outside. It was not in the bone. It was down. It's no, he it says, it says, I was wounded. That wound, the Bible tells us, was in the heart. 
The Bible tells us what came out. Blood and water came out. In that out of that wound from the heart. You know, my 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 spiritual father was talking about that blood, that blood and water. You know, every woman that wants to that that is about to give birth, that the water that comes out is salty. And I and I, was, I, I don't have to test it. <laughs> <laughs> How many of us know that our sweat is salty? Yes. Our cry is salty. Yes. Yeah, they cry. That's why in Africa, or some, in some of the tropical areas, after you have, after the sweat has dried up, you can all, you can literally feel the, the salt on your face. Amen. How many of us have felt it? I mean, it's real. The same thing also with what the the water that comes out of the issues out of the womb when there's a person. Are you are we together? Jesus was dealing with two things when he when he gave when he, when those two things came out of him. You remember the at Lot's wife. Yes. What did she become? He loves salt. Why he loves salt? Maybe we should continue now looking at that past one hour. So that we can do justice. I can get deeper. Because I'm looking at it, so I can I can go in. So you should be interested. Yeah. Didn't she do something bad? You know, it's not about something bad now. You know, We're talking about curse. Oh, okay. The curse. What what is salt? What is the Bible? The Bible says shall we we are like the salt. Do you know why the Bible says we are like the salt of the earth? We are a pillar of salt also. Do you know that? The Bible says we are what? We are salt of the earth. Why are we salt? Because salt does what? Preserves and seasons. Removes corruption. Or rottenness or, or you know something going sour and all that. Salt also increases thirst, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Let's not get into salt too much. <laughs> I, you know, like I, said, I think I'll leave it for next week so that we can get we can get into it. But the deeper you go. Now, they didn't prepare that side, but since when, you know, I, maybe the Holy Ghost wanted to get into that. But you can begin to see that there's nothing that's out of order in the Bible. Amen. Genesis 22 tells us it shall be what? A ram caught up in the ticket by his horns. And we are seeing him in the cross, at the cross, where because of those anointed, the hand of God on him, the Pharisees and the scribes and the, and the elders of the church are stripping him of that anointing. All those areas are the anointing of praise. And we say everywhere that anointing flows is a place that you can remove. Talk about the nails and the hair. Because we lay hands, amen? But it comes on us through the hair, but it flows out through the hand and through the feet. With our feet, we inherit. With our hand, we give. Everywhere my feet shall tread upon, I shall possess. Talk about the footprint and the handprint. Fingerprint. Amen? But like I said, we live in final time. So that when the spirit begin to know what your fingerprint is, you begin to know what kind of anointing you carry. Amen. You begin to understand what belongs to you. Because some of us are just walking around in, you know, in our confusion, thinking we know, yes. thinking we know, you know. I can, I can prophesy to you. I can also preach to you. And they don't know, they don't know anything yet. Yeah. Because they are dead. Deep, 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 deep things in the spirit and levels. 
Jesus' name. Amen. Did we get somewhere today? Amen. 